stay on News Center, the challenge for change, Waterfield Hall being torn down, the Outdoor Adventures Club, enrollment and retention rates, and new services at the tutoring lab. All this and more today on News Center. Good evening and welcome to News Center. I'm Chris Nolan. And I'm Nina Cottle. This is your news for February 14th, 2013. MSU has taken on the challenge for change for the fourth consecutive year. New Center's Adam Black has more. Students at Moorhead State have been logging their service hours for the Center of Regional Engagement's annual event, Challenge for Change, says Community Service Coordinator Melissa Patrick. The Challenge for Change is a competitive uh, service hour project between the student bodies of different universities. For the past three years, it's been between Eastern Kentucky University and Moorhead State. And this year we've added Murray. So for the fourth year, we have three universities. And our goal is to have all the universities in the state of Kentucky compete. Challenge for Change started in 2009 and was created in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Patrick says this year, SGA, along with the Center for Regional Engagements, decided to do a day of service. This year we had a 24 hours of service. We started at 8 o'clock in the morning, went to 5 o'clock in the afternoon or evening at uh, different organizations, nonprofit organizations across the county. Patrick says in the past years they have seen a rise in service hours and students for Challenge for Change. Their goal this year is to reach 10,000 service hours. This year our goal is 10,000 hours. We do not uh, have a complete record yet of what has been commi committed. Traditionally the hours don't start coming in until the last few days. Right now we're sitting at about 800 hours that have been reported to us. MSU along with the other schools will find out who won during halftime when MSU takes on Murray State. Reporting for News Center, Adam Black. Any student looking to get involved can contact the Center for Regional Engagement for more information. Moorhead State University has recently discovered a new activity for everyone to enjoy. Marky Owens has more with the story. For the bold outdoorsmen, there is a new organization by the name of Outdoor Adventures, says Outdoor Recreation Coordinator Pat Langendorfer. Outdoor Adventures is about uh, taking people outside, getting people more familiar with the outdoor environment. We offer trips, we do educational workshops, we rent equipment to students, faculty and staff, we also, um, we also run the challenge course on campus. News Center asked if there's any experience needed in order to participate. Now, all the, all the trips and activities that we do are designed for anyone who's never had any experience to be able to come along and feel like they were, were okay, basically. You don't need a lot of extra you know, ex expensive equipment or a lot of background in any type of activities. It's all designed for any beginner to be able to show up and just kind of go along on the trip. There are numerous activities planned this spring with Outdoor Adventures. This semester we're doing a backpacking trip on spring break uh, in Maryland on the Appalachian Trail. We're doing a trip to Mammoth Cave uh, in February. We're going to go and kind of hang out for the day and to get a tour from the National, National Park staff. We're doing rock climbing in the uh, Red River Gorge in April, canoeing on Cave Run in April, and also we'll be doing some day hikes around the trails behind campus just to have a kind of a day to go explore a little bit. Outdoor Adventures is located at the MSU Recreation and Wellness Center. It's available to students, faculty, family, and friends for a range of prices. Reporting for New Center, Marky Owens. Recently, a decision has been made to deconstruct Waterfield Hall. Harry Waterfield Hall was constructed in 1960. The building was first utilized as student housing, but since 2003 has been used as office space and storage for several organizations, including adult education and college access, Upward Bound, environmental health and safety, among others. Although this building is currently housing multiple organizations, many factors supported the reasoning behind its deconstruction. Waterfield Hall has no elevator and limits ADA accessibility in the building. The building is only equipped with window air units um, on the first floor, which consume a great deal of energy and would be an expensive conversion to newer units. Waterfield Hall has an appraisal of nearly $4 million, while the costs for renovations are $14 million. This is three times the cost of any renovations per previously performed on campus. All office and storage spaces in Waterfield Hall are being relocated to the Education Services Building. It is still unknown what will take place of Waterfield, but the space will be utilized to access other needs of students. 
address. On Monday, a bill that would legalize hemp production in Kentucky passed a Senate committee after a unanimous vote. The bill is spearheaded by Agriculture Commissioner James Comer, and three members of Kentucky's federal delegation testified in support of the bill. This included Senator Rand Paul, who made his testimony in a hemp shirt. Supporters say the bill would create jobs and help farmers throughout the Commonwealth. Hemp is a multi-purpose plant that can be used for a variety of industrial resources such as rope, clothing, paper, and biofuel. Hemp is currently illegal due to its similarities to the marijuana plant, despite not having the intoxicating effects. With the bill, farmers are required to be licensed, undergo background checks, and will be required to plant a minimum of three acres. No word yet on when the bill will be up for official vote. We'll be right back after the break for a quick look at weather with Haley Murphy and News Center Notices featuring Megan Boone. Hello, Double Six here. Today I'm going to be showing you one of my favorite gadgets, the Eagle Club. Speaker Bucks are a cool gadget to use on campus, anywhere from vending machines to the bookstore. They are even accepted at restaurants around Moorhead. Speaker Bucks are way safer than cash and have gotten me out of many sticky situations. Until next time. Eagle Lake is only a short walk away and allows you to escape from everyday life. You can exercise and relieve stress by walking around the lake, or you can just sit back and enjoy the view. Eagle Lake is the perfect place to go to relax, but in the next few months it's going to get even better. So what are you waiting for? Go up to the lake. You know you want to. Welcome back to News Center. We'll take a quick look at your weather right now. I'm Haley Murphy. Currently, you can see temperatures around 53 degrees. It's a beautiful day outside, a perfect Valentine's Day for February. Um, definitely the sun's shining. We've seen it pick up all through the day, so it's only going to get warmer, but after today, we won't be as lucky. Take a look at rec record temperatures. A high of 70 degrees in 1918 and a low of negative 7 in 1905. So nowhere near those temperatures for today, although the 70 degrees would have been much nicer. Temperatures around the state, 58 near Bowling Green, 57 in Louisville, 54 in Frankfurt, 51 near Covington, 53 Lexington, 52 in London, 53 in Jackson, and 50 in Ashland. So temperatures pretty even across the state, mid to low 50s. Nothing too bad, but we'll see way more heading our way tonight, so be prepared for that. Your radar across the state, not too much going on right now, but we're definitely going to see some storms move in tonight and bringing some snow and rain and a nasty sleet with them so be prepared make sure you're careful on the roads as the night goes on your 24-hour planner as you can see the not, the day definitely picked up today as we went through just kept getting more and more sunny and nicer we'll see temperatures go down tonight around 39 degrees around 8 o'clock so definitely be prepared for that and for the snow that's definitely coming tonight we'll be right back with the extended look at weather and a little bit after new center notices Welcome to News Center Notices. Here with us today we have Megan Boom from Career Services. Hi Megan, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you for being here with us. So can you tell us a little bit more about what Career Services does for the university? Sure. We help students from their freshman year until graduation and actually beyond. Um, freshmen might utilize our services to help decide upon a major. Um, we also help all levels with the resumes, interviewing, preparing for graduate school. Um, we encourage underclass students to think about gaining some experience through internships and co-ops while they're a student. Um, I believe that there's a resume blitz going on next week. There is. It's next Tuesday and Wednesday. It'll be from 10 until 2 on the second floor of ADUC. And we've actually got employers coming to that event to look over students' resumes and offer some advice. So it's no appointment necessary. It's a casual event. Just stop by any time between 10 and 2 on Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay. And that's put on by you all. And they... Uh, do, how did they decide to start this to help students out with their resume? Yeah, we got a lot of feedback from students that they weren't sure how to start the resume, they weren't sure what employers looked for on the resume, so we thought what better way than to bring employers in who look at resumes and make hiring decisions on a regular basis. So they're there just to offer advice at the resume of Blitz. Okay. Also another upcoming event that I've heard about is this, this career fair that you all do 
uh, every year, every semester? Is yes, it? it's every semester. every semester. Our next one is on Tuesday, March 5th. It's going to be from 10 to 1 on the third floor of ADUC up in the Krager Room. And we've got 60 to 70 um, employers as well as graduate programs that are going to be at that career fair. Great chance for any students listening to um, find out about internships, to talk to someone who works in a field they might be interested in. So it's a really good opportunity to network. Um, how do you get these future employers or future companies out to your career fairs? We, that's actually my job. I'm a career counselor as well as our employer liaison, so I reach out to a lot of the employers. And the first thing they say to me is how many students come to the career <laughs> fair. So I hope all your viewers will come so that we can say, we have 400, 500 students that are coming. Okay. Um, also, I've heard about JobLink. Can you, for our viewers, tell explain a little bit about what JobLink is? Yeah, JobLink is our online job and internship board or system, similar to a career builder or a monster that you might have heard of. Mm -hmm. So any position that we know about is listed in there, on-campus employment, any internships if you're looking to gain experience as a current student, and then full-time opportunities as well. Okay. Um, for we're well underway in this semester. Uh, seniors who are looking to graduate this semester, do you have any advice or what maybe they need to be doing to ensure that they will be able to get a job? Definitely. The average job search is taking at least six months now, mm -hmm. so definitely they need to start looking sooner rather than later. I would suggest that any student listening that doesn't have experience yet think about trying to do an internship, do some research with a faculty mm -hmm. member, gain some hands-on experience before they graduate. Come in and see us. You can just call us 606-783-2233. Okay. Visit our website. It's moreheadstate.edu slash career. We've got all the information on the resume blitz, the career fair, some of those events that if you're a senior, you definitely need to be taken advantage of. All right. Well, thank you for being here with us today, Megan. Thank you, Nina. And we'll be right back with an extended look at weather and Bonnie Daly with Eagle Athletics. And now, some tips for campus living. Do not run on the sidewalks. Always pay attention when crossing a crosswalk. Always properly dispose of trash in a trash receptacle. No smoking at any time at any place on campus. Follow these steps and campus will be a better place for everyone. Hi, my name is Stevie Vaughn and I am a Convergent Media major. The best thing about this newly created major is that I have the ability to pick up new skills in every field of communication so that I'll be prepared once I graduate. I really enjoy the hands-on experience in classes and I'm always challenged to find more effective ways to communicate. Moorhead State University provides me with the tools to succeed and pursue my goals. My name is Stevie Vaughn and I'm ready to take on the world. Welcome back to the News Center. We're taking another look at your weather. 
uh, currently in Moorhead, around 53 degrees, a sunny day, so definitely good for Valentine's Day tonight. 50% uh, humidity outside and winds around 20 miles per hour, so definitely a little windy as we're blowing in a cold front overnight. Your temperatures across the state, 52 near London, 53 in Jackson, 50 near Ashland. Down in Bowling Green, around 58 degrees, 57 in Louisville, 54 in Frankfurt, and 51 in Covington. Overall, temperatures pretty steady across the state, mid 50s, so not too bad. Definitely a good amount for February, but we'll see more cold roll in this weekend. Take a look at your radar across the state, courtesy of WKYT. Not much going on currently across the state, but more and more roll in overnight. We'll see some uh, much colder temperatures move in along with the cold front, bringing some nasty wind and rain with it, as well as some sleet and snow. Your national radar, you can see um, definitely going to get some storms moving from the north down towards us overnight. We'll see the effects of those all weekend long and into the beginning part of next week as well. Your radar coverage, you can see definitely some cloud coverage moving across the United States. We're going to see all of that come our way. We won't really see any sun freak through for a couple days. Hopefully it'll get a little sunnier towards the middle of next week. Your temperatures across the country, uh, in the 60s down near Texas, so definitely seeing some brighter weather than we are, but that's about as high as it gets, seeing um, 50s towards, you know, the entire southeast, so nothing too bad. 30s up north of us, so definitely going to see that cold temperatures move down our way as the weekend progresses. Tonight you can expect a wintry mix with a low of 39 degrees. Definitely be prepared for tomorrow as we're going to see snow and rain moving in. The roads will most likely be slick, so be prepared, get your ice scrapers ready. Tomorrow, like I said, a high of 36 degrees, no sunshine coming our way. Definitely some more snow and rain, so be prepared. Take a look at your five-day forecast. Friday, you see a high of 36 degrees and a low of 21 with a lot of snow probably rolling in, like I said. Saturday, a high of 25 and a low of 13, so not seeing much nice temperatures there. Uh, definitely expect more snow and rain as the weekend progresses. Sunday, we'll see a peak of sunshine with a high of 24 and a low of 20 degrees. Monday, you can expect a high of 44 and a low of 32 with some sun finally peeking through, only to go back away on Tuesday with a high of 35 and a low of 20 degrees. So are you guys ready for the weather tonight? It's at least nice for Valentine's Day, right? It's nice to know. Yeah, we'll definitely be prepared for this weekend. This, you know, the storm could get pretty bad. We're definitely going to see some snow moving in. So just be prepared, be ready, you know, get your winter gear back <laughs> out. Don't pack it away just yet. Oh. It's not spring yet. All right, well, we'll be right back with Bonnie Daly and Eagle Athletics. The Moorhead State men's basketball team will face off with the Jacksonville State Gamecocks tonight at 7 p.m. With a standing record of 11-14 overall, the Eagles won a 16-8 advantage to JSU in the all-time series. The Gamecocks' season record currently sits at 15-8. During the Gamecocks' first meeting with the Eagles earlier this season, JSU bested MSU taking home the win. For a Valentine's Day special, students will have a chance to win gift cards to various businesses for a date night getaway. Continuing their heated rivalry with the Eastern Kentucky Lady, Lady Colonels, they swept the season series from the Moorhead State Lady Eagles this past Saturday. In the second half, MSU had a 54% shooting effort, while EKU had a 56%. EKU came out on top with the final score being 66-64. With the loss, MSU fell to an 817 record overall and a 47 in the OVC. The Moorhead State football team welcomes back Andrew Doan, a former defensive end at MSU, as an assistant coach for the upcoming season. During his time as an athlete at MSU, Doan recorded 133 tackles, 18.5 sacks, and a three-time Dean's List honoree. Doan was previously an assistant coach at a tri-champion Butler in 2012, and the coaching staff at MSU is anticipating the season with Doan on the line. And now for New Center's Famous Sports Trivia. Um, during this past weekend, Moorhead State University versus Eastern Kentucky University matchup, which MSU player scored the most points? Is it A, Angelo Warner, B, Devin Atkinson, C, Drew Kelly, or D, Milton Chavez. 
Um, I'm going to go with C. Drew Kelly. I've heard a lot about him. You know, as the se seasons went on, he's always seems to be a really standout player. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to go with Angelo Warner. I think I believe <laughs> that. Yeah. Um. I think it um, actually is um, Angelo Warner too. Um. Okay. Well. You guys are right. The um, Angelo Warner actually uh, was the best player. He scored three free throws um, and won three, and the remaining of his points were in the paint. Um, it was a really impressive game, <laughs> and they did really good. I know. I was sad to see him lose it. You know, maybe next time. <laughs> um, but they play. They play again tonight at seven. So maybe we can go catch um, Warner in his time and see if he carries out that. <laughs> A gameplay. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, they'll bring home another win. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back after the break. Speaker Bucks are a cool gadget to use on campus, anywhere from vending machines to the bookstore. They are even accepted at restaurants around Moorhead. Speaker Bucks are way safer than cash and have gotten me out of many sticky situations. Until next time. And now, some tips for campus living. Do not run on the sidewalks. Always pay attention when crossing a crosswalk. Always properly dispose of trash in a trash receptacle. No smoking at any time at any place on campus. Follow these steps and campus will be a better place for everyone. With the spring semester well underway, New Center takes a look at the current enrollment and what future semesters may have in store. As always, the spring semester brought in less first-time students even after enrollment reached an all-time high last semester. New Center spoke to Vice President of Enrollment Services Jeffrey Lyles about the changes in enrollment. Yeah, spring enrollment is generally a little smaller than the fall figure is. Uh, last spring we had um, 9,400 students enrolled, uh, which was below the fall number. Um, 
and so this year though we expect our spring number to grow over what it was last year because similarly our fall number for this fall was higher than the fall previously so we'll expect when the official number comes out for spring that it'll be up. News Center asked Lyles what is to be expected for the upcoming fall 2013 semester. We are on track to again grow slightly in the freshman class. Last year's goal for fall was 1,600 students. We actually ended with 1,649 new freshmen. And so the goal this fall is 1,650, but we are expecting that we'll meet that goal and maybe surpass that a little. Preliminary figures right now show that our applications and number of accepted students are up over the same time last year. So things do look on track to grow slightly again this fall. But Lyles says it's not just about the numbers. Yeah, whenever we talk about enrollment, sometimes we report the numbers, but the real reason we're doing this, of course, is to provide more opportunities for students. So it's not counting students, it's actually providing opportunity for students. So we want them to come, we want them to have a good experience, we want them to be successful, stay, and of course ultimately graduate. So the first part of the retention picture starts with students who are accepted to the university and who start making sure that um, they are prepared as well as possible um, and come in and, and get a good start on the process and then every unit on campus has a role in retention after that point. News Center Scott Swiger hit the streets to ask students if they think MSU is doing their part to keep students returning each semester. I think MSU does a pretty good job of getting students to come back. I like the uh, family environment, and I like the library, it's really nice. And the gym, the gym's really nice, it's pretty new. It's a lot better than other campuses that I've seen. I think the Mother has done a really great job in making students to feel comfortable and coming back. One thing that I love about MSU is the BCM on campus. So if anybody wants to be around a Christian atmosphere, it's just really great to go. Everyone there is friendly and I've met so many friends this year and I wouldn't trade it for the world. I definitely think that Moorhead is doing the best it can to make sure that their students are staying for whatever reasons. But, I, but we do understand, I think as students, that there are a lot of things that happen that really aren't out of the university's control. I think they're doing everything that you know, they can think of. Obviously, there's always going to be more that they can do. I think Moorhead is doing a pretty good job at keeping students here and wanting to come back. Uh, I really like how all the classes are small, and I think the campus is a good size, and it seems to be safe to live on and be on at night. A new location and online program has helped MSU's Tutoring and Learning Center reach record numbers. This also opens the doors for students who want to become tutors themselves. New Center spoke with the director who discussed the new online program. We're just so glad that we're growing so quickly and we're uh, we just getting such um, success with our students. We have a new program uh, called TutorTrack uh, that's available through the university's website. Uh, students go to um, uh, moreheadstate.edu slash tutoring. They can make an appointment online uh, with us. Um, basically, for example, say a student needs help in accounting or biology class, they would go in there, they would click on that class, and then the tutors who were approved to tutor that course, they would see their times and dates available for the next week, and they could just make an appointment right there. New Center also spoke with senior tutor Brian Martin, who says the TLC has prepared him for his career. I would say it has helped me in actually learning my material better. Because when you teach somebody the material, then it's actually a review for you, and it helps you sharpen up on the material. Sometimes students will come and they just need help learning the material, or they just might need help on the homework assignment. And that's what we try to do, just try to help the students with whatever they need. In closing, Grider encouraged students interested in tutoring to apply now. Uh, tutors have to be at least a sophomore level or higher, have a 3.0 or higher, 
and then they can only tutor in subjects uh, that they received an A or a B in. They also have to have faculty recommendations uh, in order to tutor. Because of the increase in students uh, requesting tutoring, we have um, really increased the number of tutors we have also. And uh, I find myself in a situation where I'm just about continuously hiring based upon our needs. Um, so I take applications. Uh, students can go through JobLink and get information about it, or they can um, uh, email me for an application or come by and see me. I'll be glad to talk with them. For News Center, I'm Hardy Breeding. Thank you and good night.